Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial on GitLab. So what we're going to do is before we kind of get into Eclipse <clears throat> and start with the program, the first thing that we're going to do is actually get a repository. So we already have a repository, but we need a project set up. So for this example, I have a raise and swing. Um, these are things that we talked about or talk about, we'll talk about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to project, click on new project name the project so for example week one was about arrays so i'm going to say arrays um import from so this right here allows you to import from other repositories uh, github is a very popular one um if you pay for that one it's like eight bucks a month only if you want to do private but if you want to do for free it's free um bitbucket is another good one um it's they got a lot of really cool tools um but we're not going to go with that so right now we're just going to say optional um say uh uh, CIT 130 week one um, source code. All right. And then I'm going to keep it private. And I recommend that uh, everyone in this group keeps it private because this is going to be your assignment. You don't want other people to see your assignment. And then you're going to click uh, um, create project. All right. Great. So now, as you see here, we have the Git global setup the create new repository, we have all these folders, and we'll talk more about this stuff later. Um, but just to kind of get you started, this right here is your, you're going to need this, you have SSH, which is a, if you're doing it on the back end. So if you're um, setting up your GitHub through a terminal such as Unix, you're going to need this. But in this case, we're going to be using HTTPS, because we're going to be connecting directly through Eclipse. So you're going to come back here and get this information here soon. I'll copy it, but I'll probably forget it by then. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in Eclipse. So I have Eclipse open here. Um, what I need to do is set up my repository. So what you do is you go to your root folder, your folder name. This is our, um, our code right here. So I'm going to right click actually. I'm, what I need to do is share my whole folder. So every time I create a new package, I can check it in. Um, so I'm going to right click. I'm going to select team and I'm going to select share project. Uh, first thing that you're going to do is you have two selections. You're going to select Git, not TFS. Um, okay, and then you would choose a location where you want your repository to be at. You're going to have a local repository, and then you're going to have the uh, um, up in the environment area where it's up. Okay, people say cloud, but up on a, on the web server. So I have this as my uh, repository location. I'm going to go ahead and click finish. All right, great. So now, <clears throat> all right. So now what you're going to do here is we're going to do a raise. So if you right click on a raise. And you go down to team, you have all these different options. And once again, we'll talk more about what these options are um, as we move on. Um, right now, it's commit is going to be a very important one that we're going to be uh, discussing. So we're going to go ahead and click commit. Commit is um, when you want to commit your message. So you want to commit your code. You're going to do it locally and um, out to the production. So you have these options here. I would suggest getting to know this. Click on get staging view. Here's a nice little view. Probably move this up so you can see it. So what you could do is these are unstaged changes. So this basically means these guys have not been checked in yet. So for example, we're going to check um, bubble sort array in first. So I'm going to drag this guy down here. And then I'm going to put a message and say, what do you want to talk about what you did here? I'll say, uh, we'll just pretend, you know, um, add it, new sorting algorithm for my assignment in CIT 130. All right, so now you have two options down here. Now you'll see your name, whoever author is, um, has the IP address as well, um, but that's your local IP. Um, but the thing is, uh, you'll have commit and push. Commit itself will only commit locally. If you hit commit and push, what that means is it commits it locally and it pushes it up to the master staging or whatever the name of your branch is and once again we'll talk about all that in a whole other video but this is just kind of get you started so we'll click uh, commit and push now here's the thing this is where you're going to need remote um name you could keep it origin that's fine um here's the part where you need your GitLab location now we want to confirm this is what we have i'm pretty sure this is what i had Yes, this is what I had. If you have nothing here, what you want to do is go back to this guy right here, copy his information, 
and then paste it in there and then you'll have your GitLab and then your name. You want to make sure HTTPS is selected um, and then you want to put your username. So this will be the thing I don't remember what my username is. I usually do this from time to time. Let's see if it works. Um, you know what? Let me check and make sure first. Okay, I had to double check to make sure I, had, I knew what my password was because I have so many different passwords. Click next. All right, so um, source, master branch. Um, like I said, we'll talk about different branches later on. Master is always the prominent one. It's always the production one. But um, when you're working in, in a, um, for example, uh, everyone does something different. Um, if you're working in a software development, you might have a branch that is uh, based off of some type of um, new enhancement that you're making and eventually you put out in the master branch. So let's say that there's four of us in a group and we're developing something different. And then the master branch is the one that lives out in production. It's the most recent code, it's all production. So anything that gets in master might go up to the next level. So for example, say we're in development and our next level is UAT, which is for testing and then production. Well, the master is all the good code. So if we're all playing in the good code, you know, we're messing up, we're making changes and we're having problems or whatever. We don't want that. So that's why you want to have separate branches. But in this, in this demonstration, it's just for you guys to get used to using source code repository. Uh, but in this, in this thing, we didn't set up any branches and we will moving forward. But right now we'll just keep it at that master branch. Um, you'll have master, you'll have this information here. Um, we keep everything the same here and click next. And it's just going to confirm here that, you know, I want to do this. Click finish. Um, all right, so you shouldn't have to enter your username in again. So I must have not secured it. So I'm going to put store and secure store so it remembers it next time. Click OK. All right, now it's pushing the remote repository. I said push to there. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to check to make sure it did. So as you see here, there's a little lock here, a little gold thing. That means it's been pushed out there. If you right click on it and go to team and show in history, it'll show you right here that, hey, you know what? Commit time, author, committer, massive branch, add new sorting algorithms. Shows it was done three minutes ago. Um, so what I could do is another thing I could do is let me pull up my website here, show you something. So if I come out to my projects and I go to first array here, or arrays, um, it shows right here. It has a little log and says, Hey, guess what? Add a new sorting algorithm for my assignment four minutes ago. Um, I could click on that and look at this it shows your source code, which is pretty awesome. This right here is very nice. And this is kind of what I'm looking for from you guys to upload your code and I can come on here and just look at it and to make sure everything looks good. And this also gives you um, experience using source code repository. So I can promise you, those of you who um, finish your associate's degree and go out and, uh, and get a job, whether you're doing mobile app development or whatever the case you are doing, they're all using source code repository. Majority of them are using Git. Um, a lot of them use TFS if you're dealing with .NET and some Java programs, but uh, if you're doing mobile technology, um, most of them are using Git. Um, for example, I did a tour at Google's um, uh, setup over in um, Bakery Square, and they're using something called uh, uh, Piper something, and it's something they, they developed. So I asked them and, um, when I was there, and I asked them, I said, are you guys using Git? And they said no, and I asked why. They said because they have so much source code that they're checking in that Git can't handle it. So they had to write their own program. They called it Piper or something. But anyways, I was pretty impressed. And they also use all Macs over there. They don't use Windows. They don't like Microsoft. Um, at least they didn't. None of them seem to like Microsoft. But anyways, getting back to this. So this kind of shows your repository here. Shows your information. You could click on activity. Um, it'll show merge events. But we have no merge events right now. Um, go back to project. Uh, let's see. So you can actually sort the, um, if you go to the repository and click on your file, you have the bubble sort. You can even download it as a zip file here too. So it'll download as a t, t, um, Z, GZ or a zip file, whatever the case is. Um, once again, it shows more information, history, um, you know, edit it. Uh, it on the branch. Okay, so 
it's, you can't edit when you're on a branch, but if you connect to it at a different level, you can edit it out here as well. Um, but then you don't get it compiled. Um, right here is your different branches. Uh, right now we just have a master branch. So let's say that we wanted to create a new branch. We wanted to call this branch um, uh, development. Um, we'll just say dev. Um, you have to create it from one of the branches. So it's going to mirror a branch. So we'll just create it from the master branch. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to basically copy that branch. Uh, so now that branch is going to be the same as the master. And so when you're out there um, uh, looking around and you get ready to commit stuff, you'll have another branch out there. And I'll ask you which branch do you want to commit to. So um, this is just just a basic understanding to get you started. So remember this week is to go ahead and sign up for GitLab. Um, add me as a person, um, a membership as a developer so I can go out and view your uh, work. Um, in addition, just go in uh, Eclipse, follow the directions, and you shouldn't have a problem at all. If you do, you know how to get a hold of me. You can send a message to the forum or send me an email, and I'll be more than happy to help you out. All right, happy coding. Have a good day.